The students of today are the leaders of tomorrow. The quality of education they receive is vitally important to adequately prepare them to meet the challenges and complexity of an ever-changing world. For schools, this task is difficult to begin with, but with easy access to digital information on the Internet, this makes their ability to prepare students especially concerning. As more students turn to cheating, the potential for deeper issues emerge. As the gap widens in the skill sets needed for our workforce to participate in an increasingly competitive global environment, it is particularly important for an educational institution to understand the attitudes and facts among students and faculty related to this behavior in order to develop effective interventions aimed at controlling cheating. Together, Jennifer Long and Gina Pina explore this issue in a consulting project proposal for a prospective client, which will outline a strategy towards combating this enormous problem. The current trend of increasing enrollment in an online curriculum among secondary educational institutions makes this topic one of significant relevance. It stands to reason that incidence of academic dishonesty is greater in web-based learning environments since cheating, on the whole, is rising and the lack of faculty interaction makes this a very tempting option for students today. The project client is a hypothetical secondary educational institution consisting of the following assumptions. The student body consists of both on-site and online participants. The school does not currently have an honor code system in place. It is an undergrad school and the institution has requested consulting services to assist them in finding a way to reduce academic dishonesty. Several data collection tools were used in preparing for this proposal, such as the gathering of relevant research data, conducting interviews, and document collection and analysis. The research obtained to support recommended strategies used a variety of methods, such as qualitative research, quantitative research, and mixed method research. The interviews were conducted with universities currently employing the use of an honor code system. In order to adequately address this issue on a client's behalf, the problem was considered with three objectives. First, develop an understanding of the problem from within the organization. Second, research how other firms are managing this issue. And last, to provide a strategy that incorporates these perspectives along with data and findings that may enable us to predict a positive outcome. With this strategy, we created a three-stage approach. The first stage involved gathering data and information about the problem from the students and faculty involved, which might help us to understand why these behaviors exist and the most likely situations it can be found. The next stage of our approach was to examine how other institutions have managed this issue and what methods they have found to be successful. This also included speaking to universities about honor codes in order to gain further insight about the process perceptions, and impact. In the last stage, we created a strategy for developing an honor code and a process of implementation. While we will not be presenting theory to our client, it is essential that the work we're doing reflects known and accepted leadership principles. Our client organization, a secondary educational institution with its administration, faculty, and student members, is a very complex group with many levels of cultural influence. Systems thinking theory helps to explain the mechanisms we are attempting to influence within our client organization to affect desired change. Peter Senge states that organizations resemble complex organisms, therefore systems thinking would be a way for organizations to handle the complexity that is found there. Another way of looking at it is that systems thinking is a method that organizations can use to build a common language and concepts in certain areas of its culture. As underlying assumptions develop, Using feedback methods, organizations force members to adopt a common frame of reference. The implementation and use of an honor code has shown that shared beliefs, values, expectations, and motivations are influenced. We believe these cultural factors can change behavior such as cheating. Therefore, while we are introducing a strategy to change the way our client organization sees a pr problematic issue, we use these theories to help support our reasons for making a proposal that ultimately is designed to affect changed behaviors. While influencing the underlying system in a direction that will ultimately create desired organizational change is a fundamental process, the process of changing organizational behavior encompasses many additional stages. 
In order to evaluate the success of our recommended strategy, it's important to identify these stages. According to Cot Cotter and Cohen, there are eight steps which can be utilized to bring about organizational change. These eight steps are create a sense of urgency, build the right team, get the right vision, communicate for buy-in, empower action, create short-term wins, don't let up, and make the changes stick. We will use each of these eight steps in our implementation strategy. In stage one of our process, we found a number of research-based journal articles that focused on the issue of cheating. And while we found that cheating, the reasons for cheating are varied, that, and that it's common for faculty to not report suspected incidents, the most significant finding was that the responses from students and faculty differed dramatically between honor code schools and non-honor code schools. While students seemed to experience stress and pressure among both types of schools, those within honor code schools were far less likely to use these reasons as excuses for cheating. Students among honor code schools also looked at the issue of integrity as an important part of the collegiate experience, which was integral to the issue of academic dishonesty. From these articles, we determined that the data supports a strategy which employs the use of an honor code. And while many other factors may influence the cheating behavior, it would appear that based on the research we found that the most significant factor in providing a strategy to improve the problem of cheating centers around the use of an honor code because it allows for school-wide impact. In stage two of our project, we wanted to look at how other schools are handling academic dishonesty. Two schools were interviewed, Agnes Scott College and Brandeis University. Both schools reported extremely low incidents of academic dishonesty. For instance, Agnes Scott reported only 19 cases for the 07 and 08 year and only 22 incidents for the 08 09 year. Brandeis University reported only 16 confirmed incidents for the 06 07 year. Both schools had an overall student and faculty perceptions very highly favored the honor code system. And both schools reported that the honor code system was an integral part of academic life on campus. In stage three of our project, we recommend an intervention strategy. Our intervention strategy is the implementation of an honor code. What is an honor code? An honor code consists of up to four elements. A written pledge in which students affirm that their work will be or has been done honestly. The majority of the judiciary that hears alleged violations of academic dishonesty is comprised of students or the chair of this group is, is a student. The university offers unproctored examinations and a clause that places some degree of obligation on the students to report incidents of cheating they learn about or observe. Also, as part of our intervention strategy, we created an eight-step implementation plan for our client organization. This plan is modeled after Cotter and Cohen's eight-step change process. We've customized each of these steps to assist our client moving through the process to introduce and integrate an honor code system into their organization. As we pass through each step of implementation, we will measure for success with immediate feedback, but the overall success of the recommended strategy can be measured in many ways over a longer period of time. The strategy we are recommending works to accomplish change on several levels. First, cultural influence towards an attitude of integrity. Second, behavioral change toward improving the number of cheating incidents. And last, a sense of cooperation and support among faculty and staff that the organization is working together to achieve a learning-focused orientation. Measuring change can be monitored by administering surveys with an open-ended comment section allowing participants to speak freely about this issue and can be distributed through emails as well as on campus directly. This could also be included in the faculty evaluations given to classes and among instructors. At the outset, it is important that the client identify what success will mean. If, for instance, receiving feedback regarding the honor code as positive by 10% of the students within the first year is deemed a success, then we will have a benchmark to determine the impact of the intervention. We can also measure the involvement of students who report incidents, as well as the participation levels of students on the honor panel, as feedback. These strategies can be implemented and measured from year to year with adjustments made to improve the reporting process. Using this information over time, the client will be able to evaluate the levels of impact due to the honor code intervention. 